surviving in the woods. That's what Dan Wowack of Coal Cracker Bushcraft specializes in. And in this episode, he's going to come along and help us out with cooking a little bit of rabbit. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we're here today with Dan Wolwack of uh, Coal Cracker Bushcraft. We're going to be talking about woodland cooking systems. Explain. Yeah, so we're going to make a variety of different cooking systems. When you're around camp and you have just that campfire going, rather than sticking a piece of meat on a stick and struggling with it or I burning it. I do that. That's yep. <laughs> so rather than doing that, you can make different cook systems with what's around us here in the environment to really make cooking more pleasurable, make your food better. Right. Not only make rotisseries, but we can make tripods so we can make better stews and really control what we're doing. Because we need to think about the long hunters out there. They had very limited meat at certain times. So they didn't have the option of burning the meat or absolutely dropping it and losing it in the fire. So they had to be a little bit more particular. So if you make a nice cook system, you can not only feed yourself better, but you have multiple men. You could set up cook systems so everybody can do what they need to do around that campfire. So what do we need for getting this done? A variety of different branches out here. So we're gonna go pick some and then we'll okay. get started with the systems. So what kind of species and type of wood were we looking for here? So it depends on the cook system. Species doesn't matter too much as long as it's green wood. We don't want any type of dead wood for the simple fact it's going to be exposed to heat at some point. So we right. don't want that actually catching on fire. So green wood's going to be best. For the tripod, which I really feel is a quintessential camp tool, mm -hmm. because not only can we cook with it, but we can use it for a smoke system to smoke meat, but we can also use it for shelters, smoking hides, it's very important. So with something like this, we want long straight sticks about an inch in diameter Okay, is good enough. That's going to be good and strong if it's green wood and about five to six foot in length is Perfect. most optimal. You can okay. make them shorter, but this longer length just yeah. seems to be a Gives little bit more better. options. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So the process can be very simple or very complex. We're going to take the middle of the road. We're going to put a proper lashing on this. Okay. So if cordage was at a very minimum out in the field, you can just use one or two wraps and make it sort of work, but right. we'll put a good lashing on here. And then the way we're going to lash is we can always remove that cording, that cordage when we're done. Okay. So it's a very right. simple thing. So we thing. can reuse it. Yeah. Yes. So first thing we want to do is get the bottom of our sticks lined up. And again, right. I cut all of these very close to the same length. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the sticks where they lay very Flat, evenly. Right? Yep. And I'll take a piece of cordage that I have. Now how you start this can vary. There's no really proper way. So I'm just going to put a loop on here that has a slip knot okay. and start to tighten this down. Now, anytime we wrap around the sticks this way is a lashing right. and the wrappings inside are the frappings. Okay. So first we're going to put a lashing. So we're going to begin to just wrap this around these sticks mm -hmm. and just take your time with this and get it to lay in there properly. So we looking to bind these up really tight. Well, you can, it depends on what project. If this was a shelter, I would really want to bind these up good and tight so right. it doesn't move. One option you could do to bind these up tight is take just an extra piece of stick that I gathered while right. I'm out there and use it as a toggle just to right. tighten that up. Now you see how that bunched up? We don't yeah. want that to happen. So we're going to just open that back up a little bit and use our knee right here uh -huh. to keep that in line. And I'm just going to tighten that down. So for every three lashings, one frapping is right. a good idea okay. so it doesn't have to be exact but as long as we're close with that i think it's going to hold up just fine for us so i'm done my lashings there i will grab my toggle again just to put a little bit of tension on that mm -hmm. now i'm going to begin my frappings so i'm going to go in between right each of this and around and this is really what's going to bind up mm -hmm. and make this work more properly now you might have to play around with this a little bit to get it to yeah, fit work between, yeah yep and I'm just going to continue. I'll put two frappings. Okay, around, in between uh, each one of those. In right? between each one of those. And really, that'll be it then at this point. So. We made our, la our lashings and our frappings. Now to finish this off, mm -hmm. you could do several different things. We're just going to put a half hitch in here 
just to hold something it. Simple, yeah. Just something simple to hold it in place, and we will be set to go. So should we give okay. this a try now over yeah, the fire? Yeah, we'll see. All right, so very simple, just open it up. And you can feel it's a little bit tight now, but yeah. that will adjust over time right. as we loosen up on that. And this is our leftover? Now, yeah, so we always want to make sure that we have leftover cordage because mm -hmm. it's very simple. Then we take that toggle I was using to tighten down that right. lashing. And with just a very simple slip knot, okay. so I place that simple toggle on if you'd like to grab that pot. pot. Yeah. And then we just use that bale to hold our pot in place. Look at that. Now the beauty of this system is number one, we can make very fine adjustments by just sliding our tripod in. You see we got right. some height. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to grab that leg and open that up, right. we sure. can even get lower. Mm -hmm. And then if we need other type of adjustment, we can also always wrap this over the top. Sure. And we can really get that high off of the fire. And that way, if we need to simmer something, it works really well. So you can see how well yeah. this works with something. Yeah, it's so simple and Very simple. it's so versatile. Yep. Yep. So what have we got here? So we're gonna make a pot suspension system. And the beauty of this system is that you can put multiple pots on the campfire. You can make it as big as you would need. So if you have a right. real big long fire and multiple minute camp, everybody can use the fire equally. Uh -huh. So what we're gonna need to do is we need two uprights that are Y branches. Okay. Now these can vary in length. I like to say around three foot in length is best okay. with a Y on top. And then on the outside of your fire pit, you're gonna just push them straight down inside. So if you wanna right. give a little push down to that one, get them as level as we can. And then what we're gonna do is just take a straight branch that's long enough to go across both of them. Okay. Just like that. And you can level this system out as much as you would need to, right. but it looks pretty good right now. So you might be thinking, what actually are we going to do yeah. with this? I mean, we just have a bar hanging there. Well, we make hanging system, hangers. So there's different types of hangers we can make. This hanger right here is just a Y branch. So it was growing up this way. We trimmed it here and I put a notch up top. Right. But we're actually going to flip that to use it. So when we hang our pot, we use that notch and we can hang it this way over the fire. You could put multiple notches up on here and that will allow the pot different heights depending what you need. Sure. Then we can also take two wide branches if we have some extra twine or cordage with us mm -hmm. and tie them off. So I have one wide branch that was growing this way and another one that was growing this way, lash them together, hang right. that on here. Right. And, so and then can... you can hang your pot on there. Right. Also. So as you can see, we're a little close to the fire there so making multiple hangers is going to be most beneficial and again you could take this up as high as you'd want or as low as you want depending right. on what you're actually doing and we could hang other things on this other than the pots we could probably you could even hang a piece of meat on that if you needed yep, to. yep or, or if whatever. you took sliced meat and you skewered it through you can hang it almost like a kebab and then just cut it as it cooks right so what do we've got here well, this is very similar, the setup to the last pot suspension system. So we still have the Y upright branches, but you right. can see that I lowered them a lot. Okay. And the reason I lowered them is we're actually going to make a rotisserie. So if we have any type of meat source, we can actually rotisserie it over the fire. Now to do that, rather than just that single straight stick, yeah. I took another Y branch and then okay. I lashed a smaller branch onto that. And the reason okay. for that is if we put just a piece of meat on a round branch, it's gonna spin and we can't get that rotisserie effect. So this is gonna work as a clamp. Once we skewer our meat and tie it down, then the meat's not gonna go anywhere. We can lay this across the Y yep. branch just like this. And the reason this is a Y is because we can then use that to- Incrementally rotate it. Yes, yeah. yep, so we're gonna do that and we can just turn it around that way. Now, this morning I actually harvested a rabbit so we can put the rabbit right on the skewer and take a look at what it looks like. Okay. So I now have this lashed on and you can see as I rotate this, it's not sliding on the spit itself. Right. So we can set it right in place here like this. And then as we need to rotate that, we would just do so. So it works really well this way to just constantly keep rotating that and get a good, nice, even roast all around it. Well, we've got meat, we got the, the, the uh, cooking system. I suppose we should get a fire going and uh, cook this rabbit up. This reminds me so much of what's going on in Nicholas Cresswell's journal. They're traveling into the back country. They don't have very many provisions and many of the provisions they have with them get spoiled along the way. Um, they are eating off the land as they travel. You know, whatever game they can get a hold of, that's what they're cooking. They're eating in the most simplistic way possible. So the rabbit has been cooking now for about 25 to 30 minutes. 
And in the spirit of the long hunter, we're just gonna eat right off the stick here. So we'll cut ourselves a little section. I'm gonna cut some of this back strap off for us, right through here. Get you some meat right off that. Hey, it looks done, yeah. Yeah, I'll give it a little taste here. Smoked rabbit. Yeah, rotisserie style. Yeah. Really good. And if you were hungry and didn't eat for a couple days, it'd be really good. Yeah. And no gaminess at all on this thing. Nope. It's wonderful, um, basically chicken flavor, really. Yeah. I really want to thank Dan from uh, Coal Cracker Bushcraft for coming and showing us these different wet methods of building these uh, cooking setups around the fire. Whether it's a tripod or a simple rotisserie setup like this, uh, it just... You know, it's really great that we can build so many different kinds of systems with whatever's just around us. We only need a knife, maybe an axe, a little bit of, you know, cord or twine that we could make ourselves if we needed to. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you can cook whatever you need here right by the fire. So a great system. Thank you, Dan, for bringing us this, these great techniques, these yes. great skills. If you're interested in learning more about connecting with the outdoors, about how to survive in a wilderness situation, or just have fun in your backyard with a lot of, you know, living right off the land, uh, make sure to check out Dan's YouTube channel. I'll put a link down in the description below. And your, what's the school again called? Appalachian Bushman School. We're located in Pennsylvania, right in the heart of Appalachian Mountains. So you can go and take classes directly from Dan. Uh, such, such a great set of skills to learn. So thank you, Dan, so much. Thanks. And thank you guys for watching.